Alright guys, Touch Crowder back again today. Hope you're all doing well and enjoying your day. So far, a chaotic day on the timeline last night. The Call allegedly come out with some updates on exactly what the rules are going to be for CDL 2022, a couple of other things as well. And some of the European Call of Duty pros that have been around for a very long period of time quit within a few minutes of this announcement and they're going to go to Halo. Chaos ensues, as I'm sure you can imagine. Very much intrigued to your thoughts in the comment section below. If you enjoyed the video, hit in the like button. It's the best thing you can do to help this channel reach new people. And please consider subscribing as well. If you have not yet already. Firstly, this from Call of Duty in general. This is uh, was talked about quite a lot yesterday. I'm not sure when Season 1 of Vanguard was meant to launch with this kind of integration or whatever, but it's now been pushed back to December the 8th. Everyone's kind of frustrated about it in the replies. Like, um, yeah, people are like, I'm so sad, all this type of stuff. And, you know, they've delayed it once again. Also, what this could potentially mean, like, when they do these graphics, I'm pretty sure sometime during a uh, Cold War, one of these said, like, ranked play is coming. Like, it's just around the corner. So, um, just the fact that this has been pushed back, and also there's nothing on here to do with competitive at all. Like, we've got shipment being added, you know how the vibe is. And, um, you know, there's nothing about ranked play or anything. I was kind of looking through here, hoping they might have some hint towards it. But, um, yeah, not the case so far. I guess we'll see. Maybe getting delayed even further, right? Even though Trek is working on that, apparently, in the pipeline, which um, hopefully would be coming soon. But I don't really know what their plan is, right? It seems to me that Activision deliberately delay ranked play just so that they can, like, um, spark some new interest when they drop in in February. I don't know, kind of like how they used to have the World Championship with Call of Duty in March, just so that, um, you know, they could sell the second DLC, effectively. Thankfully, that's not the case anymore. As Squad League say, everything you need to know about challenges for the 2022 season. So this is honestly really quite cool. Now, um, well, a couple of things as you can see right here. So scouting series, that's going to be back in business. You know, players like Stanley, that happened uh, due to, well, right at the start of the season, like uh, end of November, December sometime, right when they did the scouting series last year, the pro teams could get involved with. But you guys may also notice this, Latin American challenges. This is a big hashtag that was going on in the timeline last year with um, a lot of great players from the Latin American region having a difficult time. Of course, the pings vary in that region dramatically. So I guess we'll have to see how that one goes. But I'm um, really cool to see them introduce this into play. Now, um, you know, they've got, you know, ladders, cups, opens, challenges, late challenges, finals, this type of stuff. And apparently, Call of Duty League updates coming relatively soon, they say here at the bottom. So um, I guess, uh, well, hopefully they'll announce something soon because we know the entire Halo circuit for the entire year now. CDL are probably thinking, okay, let's get the schedule up relatively soon, at least so we can maybe get some feedback on it, right? Because there has been times in the past for the Modern Warfare season, they released the schedule, they got some feedback that actually changed changed it, which, um, I mean, yeah, we'll see if that happens, but uh, still, there was also mention of this, the fact that Asia Pacific wasn't actually mentioned at all in some of the tournaments and the cups and ladders, and um, of course, they're adding this new region, people are like, okay, are they just getting rid of, like, Australia and the Asia Pacific sides? It seems like that still will be here, based on this graphic, but, um, you know, it's to be announced, right, so we don't really know what's going on there yet, but still, like, Belize and all these countries in Latin America, they're now in business, thought that was really cool to see, quite frankly, and Mexico getting brought in under North America, not sure that was actually always the case, or whether um, it wasn't the case last year, not exactly sure how it went, but um, still, I thought that was cool to see the Latin American guys finally, um, well, finally getting in, right? And hopefully the Call of Duty League over time can c continue expanding worldwide. It'd be great to see teams in, um, in, well, more countries than just North America and, uh, of course, France and, and the UK as it is right now. So Court Gamepedia go on to describe, yes, you know, these are all the countries getting involved. We've got Asia Pacific is still going to be involved here, so that's uh, that's not a concern, even though initially with the tweets, like, uh, well, I'm pretty sure this one right here, for example, they look at, like, okay, North America, EU, Latin America, like, I'm um, signing up for the Cubs, but, um, you know, like, where's the, where's the Asia Pacific one, right? So, thankfully, that is still there, it seems. This also, just thought I'd mention, there's some rules for some two-way players, right? Effectively, if you're a two-way player, you're a CDL player, but you can also play in challenges if you're, like, on the academy team or a substitute for the pro teams. And um, this is some rules on exactly, uh, well, how that's going to go for next year. Now, what some people were mentioning is, for example, in this point four, in weeks where Call of Duty League matches are held online, two-way players are considered eligible substitutes for their CDL teams while competing in challenges only if the CDL, etc., etc., etc. So um, in weeks where they are held online, does this mean they are going to be held online? Like we are going back to an online league, kind of like we, how we had before, like um, exactly the same copy and paste from Cold War. Hopefully that's not the case. Hopefully we get a land league. At the same time, would it surprise me to see them do this? Not necessarily, but maybe this is just a clause that says, okay, you know, in weeks where they are held online, if they are whether they're not, like um, that's not necessarily defined. But I thought it might be a little indication towards we're not necessarily getting the scene that we want to have for next year. But here we go then. So they release the comp 
competitive setting that the V1.0 for the 2022 season also been released. So maps and modes have got Search and Destroy, Tuscan, Bocage, Desert Siege, Berlin and Damiansk. And then, I mean, that's already a questionable one. And then we've got Hardpoint, the kind of uh, four maps that people mostly have been playing on. And then Desert Siege there as well. So Tuscan, Bocage, Gavutu, Berlin and Desert Siege. So um, already quite a lot of backlash about this. But it wasn't just about, uh, well, this and maps and modes list specifically. There was plenty else going on. I simply fail to understand how they can mess this up every time. Last year, there was a couple of times, I'm pretty sure, where they updated like the restricted items list on the website and it was just straight up wrong. Like um, they just got it wrong based on what they intended to do. Now, is that because they're out of touch or is that because they actually made a genuine mistake? Frankly, it seems incredible the amount of mistakes that are made. So as Godrx says, so I just can't use any secondary weapon or any ammo types. No damage mags are bad and vital is still allowed. So a lot of the things that, you know, damage mags, vital, for example, this proficiency or whatever, like, um, you know, that's still allowed here in the rule set, but every single handgun was banned. Like, um, how did this make it onto the site? Like, um, you know, the pistols aren't meant to be banned in the rule sets. And also, if they are banned, you can't even use the class, I'm pretty sure. Like, if they're banned in the official rule sets, then, um, you know, you can't put fists on a class, I'm pretty sure, like a knife on a class nowadays, a combat knife, like you could back in the day. You can't take the pistol off. So, therefore, every single class that you're going to be using in this rule set would just be banned automatically. So, it's like, okay, what is going on here? How could they possibly mess this up? As Jacob says, with every secondary ban, can you even start a game with CDL rules? Every class will be locked. And as some funny replies to this, Kenny's like, you know, party time, like, I mean, what are these guys even playing out at this point? You've got uh, this, for example, from Claystar. You shouldn't be playing games on CDL rules because you need to set to 3.5 respawn delay, right? So I think it was 2.0, the initial CDL rules that dropped with the game itself, but now they've changed it to 3.5. And as easy Mac says, they actually have changed it to 3.5 in the official setting. So at least they're up to date on that stuff. Not sure it's updated in the official game, though. But now in those competitive rules, they're actually playing on a 3.5 second respawn delay. So maybe slightly less 60 bombs we're going to see this season, but maybe that makes things less chaotic. And as Alex Pence says from the CDL side of things, should be fixed momentarily, was a mistake on the web page. But as Paul X is like, yeah, a few mistakes, I think there was quite a lot wrong with that page. As you can see right here, Maps of Moses, what we just looked at, Search and Destroy settings. This was something else people noticed on the right hand side. Not sure you guys can quite see it. Yeah, you just about can. Retain streaks on death. This used to say enabled. And people were like, what? Ex retaining streaks on death is like enabled. That doesn't make any sense. Right? If you die, the streak should go. And um, people are kicking off about this, and understandably so. You can see now that like uh, the primary weapons has been fixed, and some of these things have uh, well changed to what they're meant to be, and some efficiencies have been added. But still, there's some other things that people want to be added here, which haven't changed yet. And of course, there's Desert Siege Hardpoint, right? Which accuracy says you don't enjoy mantling into two of the hills. Half the time, I can't even mantle. Like, um, yeah, people are not particularly happy with Desert Siege from Hardpoint right now. And uh, yeah, Demiance, for example, for Search and Destroy is honestly a bit of a mess. I'm not sure I want to be playing that one. But still, it's technically in the rule set right now. And as Parasite says, Vital and Recoil Booster not banned in their settings. Damage mags, where are they? They banned every secondary. He says you physically have to equip a second agar. How are you supposed not to use them? And he goes, you know, this is actually disrespectful. And again, they, they should be embarrassed about this. So, you know, some of the things they have now fixed and changed, but there's still some things that people want added to the rule set, which haven't yet been added, it seems. But, um, you know, things started to kick off. So this is the thing about the streaks retaining on death that, um, you know, Simp was like, okay, you know, what is going on? Good rule set, lads. And uh, Paradox says, okay, this actually means that if you earned a streak, you'll just keep it if you die. Streak progression will not carry over, even though it seems like now they've disabled it anyway. So I'm kind of confused what's going on here. And then, well, so were some of the players in, especially the European amateur scene. A guy like Dave, who's been at, well, Dave and Josh are the two guys we're going to talk about here. Petey as well. These guys were part of a fantastic Epsilon esports team back in the Infinite Warfare days. Really solid player. They came top three at Anaheim in the 2017 season. It would have been for Infinite Warfare. And were really a great team through that entire era. And Dave was considered a phenomenal player in that game. And as he says, I generally cannot comprehend how a multi-billion dollar company, a multi-million dollar league, can be this out of touch with what is going on. Blows my mind how things somehow keep getting worse since this game has been released. Especially with what's going on, for example, with Halo right now. And this is what he says. I can't see myself scrimming on this game every day in its current state. I just can't do it to myself. Not stopping completely because I may have to return. But I'm going to give Halo a go. Since I've already got a lot of experience on it in the past. Excited to have fun again. Which is, uh, you know, this is the thing. A lot of players not enjoying this game right now. If you're an amateur player, I don't blame you trying to give Halo a shot. And this is what Beastball Josh says. Certainly a legend in the European Call of Duty scene. Good luck to everyone competing on COD this year. I cannot bring myself to do it as it's the least enjoyable thing I've ever played. That being said, I'm going to give Halo a go. Got a lot to learn. Excited for a new adventure. If anyone's interested in running it up, hit me up, he says. And don't we even get this for example of, um, well, as Dave continues with, actually a weird feeling like a weight off my shoulders. COD has become extremely stale even when things are good, he says. And as Clayster says, jealous of you, brother. Enjoy it. So kind of saying like, you know, I'm a Call of Duty player now. I'm going to be a Call of Duty player for the upcoming season. But kind of jealous, right, of um, Dave actually having fun competing on a game he can enjoy. Clearly, yeah, that's not enjoyable like COD 
that's not endurable right now, but you know, it's my game, I'm going to play it anyway. And um, uh, Dave and, and co actually going to go to Halo, it seems, and giving it a go. They might come back, things might change, but um, just uh, just kind of crazy the fact that they messed up this rule set, and within like a few minutes, a couple of the European guys have just said, okay, I'm off to Halo, like, I'm out of here. And Cam Allen, the coach of this team, was left on the tunnel, thinking, okay, hang on, I've got to find a new squad now, because uh, these guys just disappeared off into the abyss. So I'm honestly kind of crazy, as Crone comes out and says, look, the rules are being changed as we speak, not sure why they would go live when they're wrong, but here we are. This seems to happen every time. I don't understand it. Pistols and Combat Knife have now been unbanned. So, um, you know, some of these things that for some reason were not even in the game, I don't, I don't understand what they're thinking here. I guess it was just a mistake, but um, it just seems too, it just seems too consistent for it to be a mistake every single time. But uh, thankfully, it is now kind of along the right lines. But as Crone continues with, V1 rules that should be changed. Respawn delay to 3.5, which now apparently has been changed, but other things as well. Vital, recoil booster, damage max should be banned. A lot of people are saying this is kind of the stuff that a lot of the pros of Gentleman's Agreement is, but um, it has not yet been updated in the official rule set and will stay not being used, I'm pretty sure, by the pros until it gets updated in the rule sets. They might as well do it sooner rather than later. And then, of course, you've got the maps question. Demyansk S and D, Desert Siege, Hardpoint should be replaced. And also the big elephant in the room, the third game mode. We don't even have one right now. What are we playing? Who knows? And um, that's the question. What do we bring in as another search and destroy map or a hardpoint map? It's like, okay, we had 16 game maps at launch in the game and uh, like 20 maps if you consider some of the other ones, but um, it's uh, clearly not enough to actually have a good rule set right now. So we're going to need maybe another couple of maps to come in or uh, maybe they can figure something out that works. I'm not sure, but uh, still, this is uh, some of the changes that still need to be made and some of the pros have clearly decided, yeah, okay, I'm not, I'm not hacking it for another year. I'm straight up out of here. And as TJ says, COD needs CTF back, which uh, could be our third mode if it gets added. And Morks is like, yeah, the CWL will bring that back. Like, uh, you know, pre CDL era was better to some of these guys, not so good to others, right? Depending on how things have gone. This I thought I'd also mention because earlier today we talked about Krim and this kind of list he put in and Dashi maybe not being as high as some people might expect. And as Sim says, need two pros, one non-pro since I'm a captain. Hit me up if you are down to make some cash. And um, there was Pomar says, if snipers aren't GAs, let me get the RC's vouch. And RC's gives the vouch. So does this mean that snipers aren't getting GA this year? I don't know. But um, Pomar might be in this tournament. Of course, this particular tournament, snipers might not be GAs. They might be for the entire year. But hopefully a nice sign that the players are going to find a way to keep snipers being utilized in competitive play for this upcoming year. I just thought this was kind of funny as well from Charlie Intel. Worst map in COD history. We've got some, um, what was like Gustav Cannon. This, of course, is Stonehaven from back in the ghost days. I don't actually think Stonehaven was like that. But, I mean, it was ridiculously big, but um, it was kind of fun just because it was stupidly big. I don't know. Gustav Cannon, like, um, and this is another classic. Of course, Subpens was the one that you guys saw right there. In, of course, Call of Duty Vanguard, Pink and Lily, of course, in Modern Warfare. But let's not talk about that. But uh, yeah, Subpens, I mean, they brought this back as a deal. This was a DLC map, I believe, in World at War way back in the day. And for some reason, they brought it back. I don't know what they were thinking, but, um, you know, just uh, some of these classic legendary ups in COD history, but I'm sure you guys can uh, find some other ones in the comment section below. But very much interested to your thoughts on all this stuff in the comment section below. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy it, hit the like button, tell us the YouTube gods. This is a good video. I don't think you should see it as well. And I've grown the competitive Call of Duty community. Thank you as always. Take care. And I will see you next time. Love what Neptune just did right there. Trying to like punch out the wall to throw some sound cues to make the person peek them. Finds two. Here's the deal. Karma's 11 and 2 right now. I know he just got taken out. He was 11 and 1 coming into this. And now it's a 1v2 situation. All they have to do is find Billy. But look at him breaking out the sniper. He will literally, all he needs to do is find Crim 6. Because this is a 1v1 situation. This can make someone $14,000 richer when it guarantees them the win. Oh, I got his match point. Billy finds him, and Team Karma will.